In this video, I'm going to show how to estimate Cobb Douglas function. In the first video, I show you how to linearize a Cobb Douglas function. Now, after linearization, we have this log output level is equal to log alpha plus beta 1 times log L plus beta 2 times log k. Okay. Now we are going to estimate, since this is a linear function, we can be able to estimate by using linear regression model. But we need to find the logarithm of output, labor and capital. I will use instead of logarithm, nature logarithm and take the ln of output. And here I will find the nature logarithm of labor. And here is going to be the capital. Let's find for all these three variables. Okay, now we have the data. We can use this data to estimate our linear regression model. And at the end, we can be able to find log alpha, beta 1, and beta 2, and their estimates. For linear regression, I know that my logarithm of output, natural logarithm of output, is my dependent variable. Nature logarithm of labor and capital are my independent variable. We will choose data analysis and from data analysis we will choose regression. In this table for our dependent variable we use the data here and for our independent variable we are going to choose the data here and we will choose confidence level 95%. We want residuals and we now want the output in a new worksheet and then we will hit the button OK. Now you can be able to see the summary output. In this summary output you can find the results for ANOVA test which is the F test. You have the F statistics here. We have multiple R. We have intercept estimate which is minus 4.75. This is here, x variable is our beta 1, the coefficient estimate of the labor. And here, this one is beta 2. Now let's turn back to case study and the questions. The first question asks, estimate the Cobb Douglas production function, and we estimate it. The second question asks, test whether the coefficients of capital and labor are statistically significant. Let's look at their t value. The coefficient of labor is beta 1. And beta 1's t value is 3.08, which is highly significant at 5% level. And beta 2 is 4.32, the t value, so it's highly significant. The third question is asking determine the percentage of the variation in output that is explained by the regression equation. So you need to check the multiple r for that, and you'll realize that 97% of the variation in output can be explained by the regression equation. And fourth, fourth question is asking, determine the labor and capital estimated parameters and give an economic interpretation of each value. Here, beta 1 is the estimated parameter for the labor and is showing the elasticity of the labor. What does that mean? 0 0.41, implying that this elasticity is inelastic. So if the labor increases by 10%, output will increase 4.1%. And for beta 2, it is the elasticity of capital. And if capital increases by 10%, the output level will increase 10.7%, and it's elastic. And the last question is asking determine whether this production function exhibits increasing, decreasing, or constant returns to scale. So to decide whether a Cobb Douglas production function is constant returns to scale, decreasing or increasing returns to scale, you should look at the sum of the parameters. And here we need to look at the sum of beta 1 and beta 2. Sum of beta 1 and beta 2 is greater than 1, 
which is 0 0.41 plus 1.07 it's around 1.48 greater than 1 so it is an increasing return to scale function